The purpose of this video is to show you how to test a three wire TV antenna rotor. Now, there are many versions of TV antenna rotors, but in, from 1995 on, a lot of the cheaper ones became uh, three wire, okay? And the same company, GE, Archer, uh, there's a few more. Uh, they're all the same unit, okay? And this motor is basically 24 volts. Now, you press on this to get rid of the, the uh, lid. There's a little thing you can press, and the lid can come off. All right, now, there's three, there's three terminals. And you don't put the wire under the terminal. It goes underneath. There's a nut. When you turn the terminal, the screw, a nut drops down. You put your wire underneath, not under the terminals, or under the screw, okay? That's another thing I learned. And you're going to say, well, I knew that. Rah, 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 rah. Yeah, okay. Now, in order to test it, you need like a 170 microfarad non-polarized capacitor. I will tell you exactly what this does. This pr provides a phase shift of 90 degrees. So this motor is, is, is um, an AC motor. It's 24 volts. But it's got two sets of windings. Each pair of windings are in series. So there's two, actually two windings, okay? There's four windings, but they're in series, and technically, it's two winding. It's a two-phase motor. But the phases are 90 degrees apart, not 180. So you can't power this motor with just a transformer. I tried it. It doesn't work. You can try using different phases. It will not work. Now, I'm going to put this capacitor under here. Remember, it goes underneath here. Then you tighten it down. Okay, you got to have this capacitor. Now, this is terminal three. One, two, three. Three is a common. So you put your 24 volt AC source on there, not DC, AC. Now, when you touch this, make sure I'm still hooked up. All right, it's going one way. We put it over here, it goes back the other way. Okay. Now, let me unplug this for a second. I won't actually short anything out. Now, I went looking, and there are schematics for this Archer unit. Uh, it's the cheapest way you could possibly do something. And there's four bolts that hold this inside. Uh, there's a Jesus clip. Okay. I got the Jesus clip off. The four bolts out. This thing would not come apart. What originally happened is it wouldn't turn. Okay, and then I what I did was I undid the screws for the motor. I brought the motor up and I, I worked the gears and I, This is fine. This motor was fine and I put it back together and I could not to get it to spin Using that controller now that controller has got serious problems uh, It's it's been used so many times uh, This is all scratched up inside here and it's causing extra extra um, gripping there's things that have to be cleaned. There's things that are broken. But I just wanted to show you, you can test a rotor. Now, I, the reason I'm doing this is I wanted to know how I could test it because I knew that was a pile of shit, heaping shit, heaping smelly hot shit. And uh, I went looking, and of course, on the net, you got all the big mouths. The guy says, how do I test a three-wire rotor? And right away, they start giving them the information for a 5 or a 6 or a 10 wire rotor. And then finally, down in the message, the guy says, look, I had to finally step in. The man asked you about a 3 wire rotor. Okay. And it was funny. And I'm like, I see that every time uh, on these, these groups. And if you go looking at all these different videos, uh, the guys, they have the rotor on the table and the controller with three wires between. They just turn it. They watch it. They have it go back and forth a few times. That's the freaking video. Well, I told you, when I do a video, it's for a, a purpose. Okay? Now, if you have that one of these controllers, and you have this, and you want to see, does this work? That's what you have to do. And this capacitor came out of that controller unit. And, like I said, uh, it's 170 microfarad non-polarized. It needs to pass AC signal. You can't use an electrolytic. Okay? These capacitors are used around motors. 
and this is a two-phase motor. The phases are 90 degrees apart. They're not 180 apart, okay? I just wanted to show you that because this might help somebody at some point, you know? Once you know this is working, then you know that's working. And you notice it's approximately 24 volts. So when you're troubleshooting that, if you can't find the exact schematic, and it's up there, and uh, they're junk. They're absolute freaking junk. And I bought this so I could get a few more channels uh, on my television set. And uh, I don't know if I have enough room to swing the antenna up there. I said to myself, it's good. Just be a project, you know, keep me busy. Well, you know, uh, eBay on the label, shit on the table. You know, you got to contact the person. I'm sending it back, blah, 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 blah. See, people don't know how to test any of this stuff. And they get a hold of it at a yard sale, whatever, and they put it on there. And this stuff is not going cheap. Uh, this this remote control unit was like, say, in 1995, it was $79. They're going for three, four hundred dollars now, okay? Because everybody's cut the cord. A lot, a lot of people have cut the cord. So stuff that normally was uh, like um, a tripod for an antenna to hook it on the roof, uh, they used to be 7.95. And you figure what if inflation, they'd be like 24 dollars. Some of them are eighty dollars, and they they start rusting the moment you mount them on the top of the on the top of the roof. But just wanted to show you, you know, when, what's inside? Three wires. Three is common. These are your phases, right and left, and it's twenty-four volts will make it work. I think that's it. All right, that's it.